Hey guys and welcome to the first video about how you can start solving your first competitive programming problem in JavaScript. Uh, we're targeting a very basic problem today uh, and we'll get to it but before that uh, if you don't know what algorithmic questions are they are basically questions that uh, we want our machine to solve for us and to take a simple example for this let's say uh, your Flipkart and in Flipkart you have to make a delivery from place A to place B, then there are a lot of steps that that delivery will go through. For example, let's say uh, the delivery originates from Bangalore and it has to go from Bangalore to Hyderabad and then it has to fly from Hyderabad to Delhi and then it has to finally go from Delhi to Chandigarh and then to your house. So these are various steps that it needs to follow and it has to find the shortest path of going from one place to the other in all these steps. So this can be solved by a person on a uh, sitting on a computer using some calculations but it is in general faster if we write an algorithm for it and that algorithm solves this problem and we can feed as many uh, such questions to that particular algorithm once we have written that algorithm. So that's the idea behind writing an algorithm to automate a task that a human could do and to do that task uh, relatively faster and to do it for a lot of similar problems. So the problem that we are solving today is that we have to move from one city to the other and then from the second city to the third city and finally uh, end up at the last city. You have a lot of such uh, steps that you have to go through and you have to tell the shortest uh, or the minimum number of steps that you need to do uh, in order to reach the final destination. So uh, to visualize this problem simply, let's say you have a partition plane over here and you have to move from this initial point to the final point and let's say this initial point is Chandigarh and this final point is Bangalore and you have to go from here to here in the shortest uh, number of steps. And what is the step? One step is that you move uh, either upward or downward, left or right or diagonally up, diagonally down, diagonally left or diagonally right. So you can move in one of eight directions and that would count as one step and you have to go from here to here in the minimum number of steps. Okay. So if you see over here, uh, this is city 1 and city 2. The ideal way of doing this, you know, if this is n and this is m, uh, the shortest distance between these two is root of n square plus m square. That's how you solve a problem using the triangle inequality. But in this case, you cannot move from here to here directly in the directly, uh, in the diagonal uh, manner because your diagonals are discrete. Your diagonals have an angle of 45 degree associated to it. Uh, you, you cannot move in any direction because if you can then you would obviously choose that path but in this case there are the there are eight directions that you can go to and if you want to move diagonally you can move in the at the 45 degree angle and not at whatever angle you want okay so in this case how do you solve this problem the first thing that you should keep in mind is that the minimum number of steps let's say this is m and this is m then the minimum number of steps that you need to reach from here to here is m does that make sense because m is greater than n that we can see uh, or let's say even if n was greater than m then the answer would have been n so basically the maximum of these two is the minimum number of steps that you need to take why because at each step you can decrease the distance from here to here that from here the horizontal distance and the vertical distance at max by one you cannot decrease it by more than one so if i move in this uh, uh this diagonal direction over here I can only decrease the distance uh, between the vertical distance by one and horizontal distance by one. In one step, I cannot decrease it by more than one, the horizontal or the vertical distance. Hence, uh, the minimum number of steps to reach from here to here is m. Now, can we prove somehow that that is also the maximum number of steps that you need? Can uh, that can we prove that m is the total number of or the maximum of this distance and this distance is the total number of steps that you need to reach from here to here? The answer is yes, that would be the uh, maximum number of steps that you need. Why? Because let's say you start from here. Now you know that this particular point, uh, the final destination uh, lies to my top right. So it's in the right direction and the uh, end is above me. So I'm, uh, if I start moving in this diagonal direction till the time I reach the 45 uh, degree, uh, we move uh, at 45 degree until the time we reach the point where this end distance becomes zero. So you have conquered the horizontal distance that you had to and there is only this vertical distance that's left that you need to conquer. So let's say you keep moving in this diagonal direction and the distance that you covered basically is n in this direction and n in this direction and the distance that is left is m minus n, right? And this m minus n you can cover by going in the upper direction. So the net time or the net number of steps that you need is n plus m minus n, which is basically n. So if basically if you have to solve this problem and you know that this is this particular point is at x1 y1 and this particular point is at x2 y2 find the vertical distance between the two which is nothing but the absolute value of y1 minus y2 find the horizontal distance between these two which is nothing but the absolute value of x1 minus x2 
and then find the maximum of these two. Whatever is the maximum of these two is the time or is the number of steps that you need to reach from here to here. I hope that clears up the problem and this can be extended to uh, multiple cities as well. If you have been given city 1, city 2 and later on a city 3, then you know you have to, the number of steps that you need to reach from here to here is the absolute, uh, the maximum of the horizontal and the vertical relation between these two. And this logic can be applied to these two points as well. And you can keep doing it for multiple points and reach to your final answer. So I hope you uh, got a little gist of how you can solve the problem. Now you will be actually coding this problem in JavaScript on a platform called Interviewbit. So you don't have to set up anything on your computer. And once we code this problem and solve it, uh, you'll be able to make your first uh, submission in a cooperative program. And from there you can take on and tackle more problems. And we will be also talking, uh, tackling more problems in the future. So let's get to the coding part. Hey guys, so let's get down to some coding now. Uh, this is a platform by the name of interviewpit.com where you can prepare, where basically people prepare for uh, campus interviews for internships and placements, but you can use it for algorithmic questions practicing as well. So this has a bunch of sections. We'll be focusing on the programming section. And the question that we just solved is the first question in the arrays section. So open this uh, in your computer. It's called min steps in infinite grid. So if you go through the question, it's basically similar to what we discussed. You are given a sequence of points and the order in which you need to cover these points. Given, give the minimum number of steps in which you can achieve it and you can start from the first point. So you have to start from the first point, move to the second, from the second move to the third and you have to do that in the minimum number of steps considering you can move in the eight directions. So uh, just come down here and select the language as JavaScript because we are doing all the competitive programming in JavaScript in this course. And if you don't understand what all of this stuff is, it's basically um, module.exports, as you can see, is an object. It has one attribute called cover points, and this attribute is a function. So if you don't understand this structure right now, just uh, ignore it. What we have to do is that inside this function, we have two parameters, a and b, which are the array of integers, which represent the x coordinates and the y coordinates of the uh, ith point. So the ith index uh, value on this, in these arrays is an integer and that integer represents the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the ith city or the ith point which we have to go to and we need to start from the first point which is basically the zeroth point and move to the n minus one point and uh, find the minimum, uh, minimum number of steps that we need to take to cover those and whatever value we get we need to return from this function and the interview bit algorithm will basically check what this function has returned for a lot of cases and check if your answer is as expected so you have array A and you have array B. If you remember from uh, what we discussed, for each and every point, we need to go diagonally uh, till we co compress one of the uh, directions and then move vertically or horizontally to finally cover the rest of it. And what we got down to in the end was that uh, if there is a point starting with x1, y1 and the second point is x2, y2, what we need to do is we need to find the maximum of the absolute value of x1 minus x2 uh, comma the absolute value of y1 minus y2 and this will give us the answer right now we don't have just two cities like we did in the example that we discussed we have multiple cities so we will, we will need to iterate using the for loop so for where i equal to 0 i less than n minus 1 i plus plus why did we write n minus 1 over here? Because we need to compare the first point with the second one, the second with the third one, and the second last with the last one. We don't need to compare the last one with anything else. So we will just iterate over the from the 0th to the n minus 2th index. We leave the last one because we don't have to compare it with anything. Now, what is x1 for this loop? x1 is nothing but a of i. x2 is nothing but a of i plus 1 y1 is nothing but b of i and y2 is b of i plus 1. So in, in this particular iteration of mine, I am checking the distance between the ith and the i plus 1th city. So these are the x's and y's in that case. Uh, we need to return the net number of steps that it took for all of the, for, each, for iterating through all of the cities. So we will define an answer variable whose initial value we have taken as 0. So initially it has uh, the value 0. Over here, we'll modify its value to something and finally we will return that value in this function. 
And what will we add to this answer over here? So in each iteration, what is the distance that we have to cover? It's nothing but max of absolute value of x1 minus x2, comma, absolute value of y1 minus y2. This is it. Your question is done. Hopefully, I think this would pass. So what have we done over here? Uh, again, what we're doing is we're iterating from uh, the first point to the uh, second last point. We're comparing this point with the next point and finding what is the answer for this, what is the number of steps that it would take me and I'm adding that to the answer. So here is the first one. Answer is equal to answer plus this thing. So answer was initially zero. After the first iteration, we add this value to the answer. After the second iteration, we do that and we do that in every iteration so that your answer variable finally contains the net answer, the answer which contains the summation of all the cities or the steps taken in all the cities to reach from the first to the last point. If we try to test this, and this will basically let us know if there are any errors, there are, it says n is not defined because n is not a variable defined anywhere. So either you can define n as a dot length or you can simply write uh, a dot length over here and it says that this is the it gives the correct answer for one or two cases. So when you test, it just tests it for tests it for its compilation and for a few basic uh, cases. When you click on submit, then it actually checks whether your whether or not your solution passed. And if you see in this case, the solution passed. So as you can see, this is just five lines of code that you have to write in the end. And JavaScript made it so simple. I think actually this would be very uh, simple in any language, but. Uh, functions like max and function like absolute uh, which are predefined in JavaScript helped uh, us basically uh, in achieving our final goal. And I hope you understand uh, how, how this particular algorithm is working. Uh, if you did not understand, I'll go over it one more time. What we have to do is we have to check the steps taken from the 0th to the 1st city. Then the, let's say there are just 3 cities. Then you have to do it from the 0th to the 1st and the 1st to the 2nd. If there are just 3 cities, the value of n would be 3. And a of 0 and b of 0 would contain the x and the y index of the 0th city which is the first city. Uh, so x1 would be the x coordinate of the 0th city, y1 would be the y coordinate of the 0th city, x2 would be the x coordinate of the first city and y2 would be the uh, y coordinate of the first city. And as we saw, this is the answer for a particular x1 and y1. If there is one x1, uh, uh, y1 over here and x2, y2 over there, uh, then the number of steps that you need is this particular thing which we discussed in the video before. We are just doing this again and again uh, by looping through a for loop. What is the for loop doing? It is looping through and because there are a lot of cities that you have to go to and so that we don't have to write this code again and again, we use a for loop to do this. This is a little difficult question than what we discussed. What we discussed was for just two cities but if there are multiple cities then you have to write a for loop and go through all of these. And if you submit this should work. So I would strongly suggest you to Try this question on your own. If there are any doubts, just post them in the comments. If this is the first time you're trying to submit a question, I know this can be a little difficult to understand. Uh, so if you have any doubts, let me know and try to solve this problem on interview bit because we will be moving to a little more difficult questions in the future. And if you don't understand this one, you might get confused in those uh, in the ones that come in the future. So thank you for joining me in this video and I hope to see you in the next one.